Hello, this is Keith Dahl, and this tutorial is on how to populate a list box control in an Excel user form using Excel 2016. What I'll be showing you, uh, I'll be giving you an example of an Excel spreadsheet, and uh, its sole purpose is to populate the list box with data coming from a particular sheet within that workbook. So first what you uh, would do is create a defined name that will grow over time as your data grows. In other words, uh, uh, the list box within the user form uh, control, what you want to do is you want to display data within that list box that pertains to the data that you have in your worksheet and in most cases uh, that worksheet will be for the sole purpose of adding data to it day in and day out. So you want to define a name, a name range that is not confined to a certain cell, row, column, combination. You want it to grow over time. And in order for us to do this, we're going to be using uh, a couple functions. One would be the offset function and the other one would be the count a function. So the offset function, the arguments that go into the offset function, the first argument on through the fifth argument are going to be one, your reference, the rows, the columns, the height, and the width. And what this means is the reference, the first parameter, is going to be where do you want your data uh, to begin um, within that uh, uh, range. The second and third um, arguments or parameters are referencing the rows and counts. And what these will do is you're going to be specifying how many rows or columns that you want to move up or down or left to right in order to define your range within this function. And the height and width are going to refer to how many rows up or down or how many columns do you want it uh, uh, how wide do you want your range to be in your worksheet so here's an example of the uh, offset function that we'll be using within this Excel spreadsheet that I'll show you in a, in a minute uh, it's going to specify as the first argument uh, um, it's going to reference the sheet one sheet within the workbook and that's why I named sheet one now this can be anything that whatever your uh, sheet is named that's what you would put here in the single quotes you'll have an ex explanation point here this is just the syntax that Excel uses and then you're gonna uh, name uh, put in the range that you want to reference. In this case, it's the absolute reference. We always want it to begin in cell A2. We don't want that to change over time. Now, as you can see, I have two more commas after this. What this is, I'm emitting the second parameter and the third parameter. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I do not want it to go up or down or left or right any number of rows or columns. I just want my range to start in A2. Now this fourth parameter is going to refer to the height and what this is is uh, it's going to count the number of rows uh, within my worksheet. So in other words this count A function is going to return it counts the number of cells that are not empty in a range. So in this case, what this is referring to, it's going to uh, reference sheet one in the workbook, and it's going to select um, uh, column A through column A, basically, the height. So it's just basically selecting the entire column A and then I'm going to subtract one from it. The reason why I'm subtracting one from it 
is because my worksheet has a header row in it. And I do not want the header row to be reflected within uh, my list box. And you'll see, you'll, it'll be more clear to you once we get into the worksheet. This last parameter or uh, argument to the offset function is going to refer to the width. And the, uh, so what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be counting. Again, I'm going to be counting the number of cells that are not empty within a range. So basically what I'm selecting here is row 1 of the worksheet. And it's an absolute, so it's just going to count how many, uh, basically how many columns that are not empty. And again, you'll see this in, in the um, worksheet. So, and then your next step is obviously you're going to create a user form with a list box control on it. And the list box control, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using two properties of the list box control. One is the row source property. Now, this row source property must be set to the defined name range that you have created up here. Uh, and what, what again, the row source property is just basically where am I going to get the data from in order to populate the list box with the information that you want. The column count property of the list box control now must be set to the number of columns you want displayed within your list box. So let's now go over to the worksheet and I'll explain furthermore on how all this works. So here we are in our list in our our Excel spreadsheet with a um, user box our user form and what and here is the user form and here is the list box within this user form and as you can say see the data is already populated in there and again you could see if I move this down you could see this is the exact data that exists in sheet one of this workbook um, again you could scroll over all the way to the right and you'll see more data that exists. And again, it, it basically equals what, what I have in this spreadsheet. So I'm going to close, out, close this user form and I'll show you um, first what I do. Again, this is your data uh, within sheet one of this workbook. As you can see, it has a header row in it. And if you count the number of columns, it comes out to 16 columns. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to be able to define a named range in order to use that name range in the row source property of the list box. Again, you would go to formulas. And then in order to create one, you would go over to define name. And then you would name it. And whatever you put in here, this is the exact name or uh, what we're going to be using in the row source property of the list box. And of course, here it's going to refer to the range that you put. So I'm going to cancel out of there and I'm going to go to my name manager because I already have my defined named set up with that offset function. Now I want you to watch, once I click in this area, I want you to watch what happens over here. What's going to happen is it's going to put a dotted line around the range that is going to be used in order to populate the list box. So here I go. As you can see, here's that dotted range. So it selects my range from uh, basically from uh, A2 all the way over to the last column where there is data. And again, it's going to go down to the number of rows where it sees data. It won't go beyond that. However, as your data grows over time because of the way I set up the offset function, 
if I start populating these rows and columns with data, that range will automatically, that offset function will automatically calculate, hey, there's new data in these rows and columns. Let's also include that in our range so we can populate that into the list box. So now let's go over to the developer tab, go over to Visual Basic, and let's open the user form that I have already created. I'm going to double click on this. And basically, again, I, all I have in this user form is just the list box control. So if I click on the list box control, the properties dialog box will pop up. And I'm going to show you the two uh, fields, the column count and also the row source property, which is down here. Again, as I said in a, in a previously, the column count property must be set to the number of columns that you actually want displayed in this list box. I just selected 16 for the sole purpose of this tutorial because there are 16 columns in my worksheet and I want to display every single column uh, in my list box. The second property is the row source property. If you scroll down here, as you can see, here's the row source property. And what you put in here, in this particular case, because I'm getting my data from my worksheet and I already defined a named range to select that data, and this is the reason why I put in customer data, because customer data is my defined named that I already created. And once you put in your defined name there, it'll automatically, once this user form opens, it's automatically gonna uh, find out, okay, where is this customer data range, and what data uh, uh, is within that range. And it's automatically, going to go and, uh, and populate this list box. Using this method, you will not have to utilize VBA um, in, order, in order to populate this list box. Now later on, when I create more tutorials, I'll show you a way to populate a list box using just VBA code. So. I hope this tutorial helps you understand how you could um, um, use a user form with a list box control on it and how you can populate that list box with data that comes from a worksheet within your workbook. Again, uh, please like and share this uh, tutorial because there are other people out there that are looking for this information. because because they want to know how to do this uh, um, uh, for the companies that they work with. Again, I want to thank you for your time, for stopping by. This, again, my name is Keith All, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial. And have a great day. Bye now.